Welcome true believers to Lazy Gamers Sunset Overdrive Review. I'm Darren Bontes and I'm going to take you through the nitty gritty, the questions that you are asking about Sunset Overdrive. I've been playing the game, I've clocked plenty of hours in it so far, so let's get down to it. Here are your questions and here are my answers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sunset City. I hope you enjoy this stay. I think the short answer is, um, is this the game that will make you want to buy an Xbox One? No, no it isn't. But the more pertinent question right now is, is this the kind of game that the Xbox One needs? Yes, oh, yes it is exactly the kind of game you should have on an Xbox One if you already own such a console. I think we've got to a point where we are just way, way too saturated with very serious games. We, we need something, you know, that's a bit more light-hearted. Something, you know, that makes us realize why we started playing games in the first place. Not just yet another contemporary uh, Battlefield of War Duty shooter. And those are the kind of games you see marketed at kids. Uh, like Insomniac's previous efforts in Ratchet & Clank. The thing is, as an adult, you don't want to buy that game. Because, you know, you think it's for a kid. And because of that, there's no other real alternative for you to engage in. And that's technically what Sunset Overdrive is. It's the kind of game that, you know, just taps into that joy center of your brain that makes you realize that, you know, colors and wackiness and maybe a bit of sarcasm and satire isn't a bad thing. Maybe this can actually be fun. So yeah, it's not the game that will make you want to buy an Xbox One, but as I said, it's the kind of game that the Xbox One needs right now. And if you look at what's on the marketplace, there's no other game like it. So it's going to scratch a very specific itch. Somebody call off Roy Rage! <laughs> Come forth, burglar, and face my justice! <laughs> The kind of quests that you get in Sunset Overdrive, they pretty much either kill this or fetch that. So, you know, depending on what kind of actions you like in your sandbox games, you're not going to find anything too revolutionary. That being said, there are some very cool missions. There are some very experimental missions, such as killing OD with a massive boulder, or leading a live-action role-playing charge, and, you know, having cannons fire on the positions of the OD. It's things like that that are very cool. And there are quite a few missions like that. Just in between the your more repetitive missions that you've got to get used to. So take that with a pinch of salt, if you will. Are you like a superhero or something? What? It's just the way you move, the, the things you do. Well, uh, good luck, kid. Is it fun? Yeah, you bet your sparkly ass it's fun. I, I had a great time playing the game, I cannot deny that. What Insomniac have created is something with a very, very solid foundation. And there's, there's just some great mechanics at play here. I mean, the entire navigation system is what drives this game forward even if it does have a story that was pretty much an afterthought. So, make no mistake, as you play the game, it's impossible to not have fun when you're grinding and bouncing around and killing mental OD and scabs are populating Sunset City. Yes, yes it is a fun game. And it knows that, which is also cool. It knows that it's fun, it knows that you're having fun, and it knows that it's going to keep you having fun. So there, there's your answer.
you're gonna get this comparison a lot. A lot of reviewers are gonna say it's like Tony Hawk meets Gears of War meets a can of Red Bull. And in a way they aren't off. There's the whole grinding aspect, there's shooting, there's running, but there's no cover, there's no cover whatsoever, so your crates are perfectly safe. But if there's any game that this is a spiritual successor to, it's that other classic jet set radio. It's got that funky attitude, that, that rebellious spirit. So yeah, that's the kind of game that Sunset Overdrive is. It's less Tony Hawk, more Jet Set Radio, and a little bit of Gears of War thrown in for good measure. Maybe you'll be lucky if I let you live. Kind of a dick, huh? Treason! Arrest for Kim and banish her from the troop! Chill out, Mussolini. I am the troop master, and this is my troop! As I've mentioned, Sunset Overdrive is most likely the most colorful game you'll see this year. It's just popping with attitude that extends through its visuals and to its um, SoCal punk rock themes. The world of Sunset City is just beautifully realized. Uh, everything obviously has a point we can grind on or bounce off of or wall run on. But that's also presented in a way that just pops, it just appears in your eyes with just such a vibrant palette. And that extends to your character as well. I don't think it's possible to make a moody brown and grey character with the customization option in the game. It just isn't. So when you see this game in action, it's just going to just stand out from everything else that's available. It's not the most realistic graphics, and there's a bit of clipping here and there, but otherwise, it's the freshest graphics you'll see this year in a game. Very, very fresh. Like, you know, like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, rap lyrics fresh. Yeah, I'm old. I've been working my ass off to repair this thing, then you go behind my back and make a new propeller. You looking to steal my glider? No, it wasn't like that. I... I'm fucking with you, kid. Can't you see me smiling? So, of course, you want to know is how long is your money going to keep you occupied with this game? Well, as you can see, yes, my playthrough from the game. Now, I played through over a week. It took me, you know, about 12 and a half hours to get through the main campaign and a few side missions here and there, and maybe a challenge or two along for the way. That being said, I've still got a ton to do. There, there's still a load of side missions to get through, too many challenges to get through possibly, and of course there's the online side of the game. And I think this is where Sunset Overdrive is really going to find its rhythm. Now Chaos Squad it puts you and a bunch of your other friends against the hordes of Overdrive and Scabs, but with various challenges added to the mix. It's unrelentingly chaotic but oh, yeah, it's a lot more fun than you realize uh, especially if you've got <laughs> enough friends to join you for it in a way it reminds you of, of uh, mass effect 3 when that game launched with its multiplayer mode which was all about team-based action but this one works pretty pretty damn well and it gives you bonus points gives you cans of overdraft for your currency gives you actual cash to buy more uh, customization options but once you once you finish with the single player, there's still plenty to find and, and explore, but I think a lot of people are going to be focusing on Chaos Squad. And that's where the real meat of the game lies, especially when you've got the gear to go with you. I think with Sunset Overdrive, it's going to be a very Marmite game. It's going to be very polarizing. Some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it. And there is a chance that it could get repetitive, it could get boring. But this all comes down to the player. Because Sunset Overdrive is all about how you are going to play the game. You could just grind on a rail endlessly when you're going to battle. Or you could grind in, do a bounce attack, jump off of a car, do a wall run, grind back in for more action, rank up your style and get cool, heroic and epic amps that help you in battle. That's what it's all about. It's all about how you want to play the game. So, it might be repetitive for you, or it might be absolutely loads of fun. As I said, it's going to be polarizing, and it's all going to come down to how you approach a game. Sunset Overdrive, it gives you the tools to engage in battle and navigation and exploration, but it's all up to you to decide the best way to use them. Do you want to use all your tools, or do you just want to focus on one of them? The choice is all yours.
up for Fizco? What do I look like, an asshole? Well, maybe not a Fizco asshole. But I'm gonna shoot you anyway, just to be sure. Wait, listen, I'm not Fizco. I'm just here to steal computer parts from you. How'd you think you were gonna do that? Well, I got this here gun. Yeah, I got guns too. Damn. But how do I know you can use them? I'm an American? I can use a cocky son of a bitch like you. If there's one major stumbling block in Sunset City, it's that there's not much of a story. I mean, the actual setup is kind of cool about fighting energy drink monster zombie creatures. But beyond that, beyond setting up the world of Sunset Overdrive, the story doesn't do much. It introduces some great characters, some great factions that you interact with. Very imaginative characters, I might add. But that's about it. There, there's such a world to build here, but the game doesn't run with it. And for some people, that story, having a story, is what compels you to play the game further, to complete it. There's a lot of self-referential pokes and jokes and in-jokes, but it just feels like an afterthought. And this is where Insomniac kind of dropped the ball. Because, you know, nothing is developed in a narrative sense in Sunset Overdrive. Hey, if you do find a way out of the city, you'll come back and rescue us, right? Come back? To Sunset City? Why would I? Of course you'll come back and save us. You're you. I'm sorry. I don't even know why I questioned it. So there are two sides to customization in Sunset Overdrive. There's your more cosmetic side where you can create a luchador mad Scottish fighter brawler type thing. I don't know what I created, but that's what I created and I like wearing a wolf mask anyway. That's the cosmetic side to Sunset Overdrive. Then there's the more technical side. Now, everything you do in the game goes towards your various badges and meters. You know, you kill more Fizco robots, you get more badges for that. You use your handgun, you get badges for that. You grind a lot, you get badges for that. You undergrind, you overgrind, you wall run, you bounce, you get badges for that. And the more of these badges you accrue, the more uh, abilities you can unlock such as health regeneration, having more ammo with a single shot weapon, having better damage with an automatic weapon. That all ties in together. You choose what you want to customize, you choose how you want to play, and that's how you customize your character, which also carries over to Chaos Squad, which is kind of handy. That's how customization works in a nutshell in Sunset Overdrive. Hey guys, I want you to meet my new friend. Shut up, Sam. You suck at friends, Sam. Guns, guns, guns. It's, it's the kind of thing that makes a game go forward. I mean, you can only do so much with cool navigation, but you also have to have some cool guns. And that's something Insomniac is known for after they work on Resistance and Ratchet and Clank. They are the masters of guns. So, I'm not trying to create an understatement when I say that the weapons in Sunset Overdrive You'll have to pry them from my cold, dead hands before I give them up. There's a lot of very imaginative guns in this game. Uh, one of the first ones you introduced to is the Flaming Compensator, a massive cock and ball shotgun that can set the OD on fire. And there's also, you know, your standard guns like the Dirty Harry Magnum or an AKFU, which is an AK 47. Then there's something even cooler like a rocket launcher that shoots. Uh, teddy bears are stuffed with TNT, T and teddies if you will. You can freeze enemies, you get gigantic ray guns that you can blast them apart with. It's just insane what's on offer here. Each gun also has a certain effectiveness against enemy types. Some work well, some don't. Guns themselves can also be upgraded, and with the badge system they can also be augmented to be even more powerful. So that ties into the whole customization aspect. And just as, as navigation in Sunset City has a very major part to play, so does your weaponry. And it's just nice to see that addressed properly. And it's nice to see Insomniac back in that particular groove. So to cut it short, here's what I meant to say. Developing Insomniac, they've got their groove back with Sunset Overdrive when it comes to guns. And it's about time. So what kind of game is Sunset Overdrive at the end of the day? Well, the story is hardly there, but it's sufficient enough to set up the game. But as I said, it's hardly a story to begin with and the characters are underdeveloped. Likewise with the challenge, 
there isn't any. It's so easy to die and so easy to come back with very little penalty attached to it. But despite all this, Sunset Overdrive is colourful, is vibrant, is fun and it's got attitude. And it's the kind of game more consoles should have instead of your usual shooters. That's why I think I'll be heading back into Sunset City and that's why we're giving this game an 8.5. <laughs> Forsooth, countrymen, that was amazing. Allow me to thank thee for thy skills on the battlefield. Thou dost possess the strength of Samson and the wisdom of Solomon. And the power of love.